And what we're going to be discussing are the African origins of science and metaphysics. And this is a very important topic, primarily because of the fact that science and the subject called metaphysics are two things that definitely impact on our lives. It's interesting to note how many of us are affected by scientific discoveries that have been made that have the ability to improve the quality of our lives. But at the same time, many of the people, many of the scientists who spend a great deal of their lives doing research and developing theories and products are of the notion that science is the highest form of existence, that the people who are able to create these devices, the televisions and the VCRs and, and the space shuttles are the most brilliant individuals that have ever existed on this planet. That the science and, and technology that exists today has taken us to the highest plateau that man has ever uh, existed on in this planet. And that's not true. It's not true at all, particularly when you're able to study the history of mankind, particularly from an Afrocentric perspective. And when you do that, you find that in many ways, we are very primitive compared to some of the ways of, of the ancients. We have to begin to understand what the differences are. We have to also begin to understand what are those aspects that we can begin to incorporate in our lives, which will allow us to become the best people possible. Last year, Newsweek magazine uh, had on its cover this particular uh, story search for Adam and Eve. It's in the November 11th issue of Newsweek magazine. And this story is important because uh, it dealt with a very uh, controversial theory, as they describe here in the cover of this magazine. It's also important, too, because the story originally came out in December of, um, in January of 1987. But it didn't make the cover of Newsweek until January of 1988, and just recently, in October of 1989, it also was uh, presented again in USA Today. So this story keeps coming out, and what's so interesting is, is the results of a finding of, of scientists, biologists at the University of California, Berkeley, and also biologists at uh, London University, who did a study of a cross-section of people, studied the mitochondrial DNA of a cross-section of people from all over this planet, and they came to one conclusion, and that is that every man, woman, and child on this planet has one common denominator. That is, the mitochondrial DNA that links them to an African woman. In other words, every person on this planet is of African descent, genetically. Like, that has biologically been proven, so th that, that's one good thing about science that we can applaud right now, that is that they finally came to a conclusion that African people stated hundreds if not thousands of years ago, that African people were the first people on the planet. So then, as we begin to, as science begins to unlock some doors for us, it allows us the opportunity to look back at statements, at discoveries that were made by our, by our ancestors, and to see the validity of those statements. One of the most profound things that our ancestors studied and understood was that man was a model of the universe. The old adage, as above, so below, those, those things that exist outside of this planet also exist on this planet and within man. Man is a reflection of the universe. And to the degree that a person is able to understand himself or herself is the same degree that that person will be able to understand the working of the universe. They are directly connected. They are not separated or isolated. If man understands this knowledge of himself, the knowledge of the universe, then we find that he will also begin to, to understand other aspects of knowledge and information that will help to expand your level of awareness. Much of this information can be found in the study of astronomy, astrology, mathematics, medicine, symbolism, spirituality and religion, as well as architecture. And when you study the development of man in ancient Kemet, you find that all of these aspects were incorporated in the ancient Nile Valley civilizations. If we look at 
the development of man. Scientists said that mankind and civilization began in Africa. So if we look at that, if we accept that reality and look at the literature, we'll find that the ancient commissions had a word, Africa, which meant the birthplace, which literally meant the birthplace of mankind, the birthplace of culture and civilization. And those of you who have had an opportunity to, to read some of the works of Diop, who talks about the, the true cradle theory of man, or have had an opportunity to hear Dr. Edward Nichols talk about the axiological references between the different types of people that inhabit this planet, you can begin to understand how the various races came about, how if mankind began in Africa, and as the, these African people began to migrate to different parts of the planet, they began to adapt to changes in the environment. Moving into a colder environment, they began to wear more clothing, more animal skins, which uh, insulated their skin from the sunlight. They began to get gradually lighter and lighter. In a colder environment, their facial features uh, would, would constrict. The noses would become smaller. The lips would become thinner. Their hair would become um, lighter and straighter to insulate the body. And eventually, over a period of years, a new race of people evolved. Uh, this has also been scientifically proven to be a fact. This is how the various races uh, of people on this planet speciated or evolved because of a means of adapting to climactic conditions. So, if we understand that, and, and more specifically, if we understand what Dr. Nichols talks about in dealing with the axiological references between the European and the African, when the, Euro when the African was living in, in this tropical environment on the continent of Africa, most of his basic needs were taken care of. Food was easily accessible. Uh, clothing was, was not a big concern. Shelter was easily made so that with having the bare necessities of life already met, they can begin to focus their attention on the development of their mind, the development of their intellect. They can begin to study their surroundings and benefit from accumulating this knowledge. One of the things that they saw is that they, they saw a direct connection, a direct correlation between the sources of, of creation and them being able to, to benefit from that. In other words, the creator or whatever the, these forces of creation were seemed to to, to have blessed these people by giving them an abundance of food, clothing, and shelter. But those Africans who migrated to the north, who settled in Europe, in a harsh or cold environment, found that they had to struggle for their existence, found that, that food was not as plentiful. They had to learn how to, to grow the food. They found that there were only basically three months out of the year in which to plant the food. After the food was planted, they had to be able to harvest the food. After the food was harvested, they had to be able to store the food and to protect the food from other people who didn't have it. They had to also defend themselves from the elements, from the cold, defend themselves from other people who didn't have what they had. So that began to develop a more aggressive mindset within these people. These people also saw nature as something that they had to do battle with on a continual basis. They saw nature as something that they had to conquer. So this idea of them surviving because they had to, they were forced to do battle against the elements and only, as they said, only the strong survived. Only those who had the strength or the wits were able to survive and make it from one year to the next. And these people eventually became the more powerful people because they were they evolved to become more aggressive. So you have two basic mindsets. Diab talks about this two cradle theory, this two cradle concept, and how you have one people in the South who have a more genteel mindset, who live in harmony with nature. You have another group of people in the North who are more aggressive and are forced by the environment to see nature as, as an enemy, as something that has to be conquered. So then, as these two people, two groups of people, began to uh, develop their various cultures and civilizations, they saw nature from two different perspectives. They, they, 